Welcome back, and let's not waste any more time, and let's get back to the video where we're going to push the flight envelope of this plane. See you in a moment. 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 Great visibility. Just great visibility. There's an Edinburgh Air Force Base over there. Three zero zero. And we climb out to two thousand feet. Now we stay below two thousand feet because um, well following you know real life procedures. Um, <laughs> Controlled airspace Adelaide approach begins at 2,000 feet and above. So let's head over here. Pick up Torrens Island. Not really an island, that's what it's called. It's actually there, but we're not going to bother with it. Start trimming down as we come up to our climb. Hyper two pop and whiskey, you are leaving my airspace. Frequency change approved. I was gonna go out to Port Perry as I said, but I think um, given how long it's taken us to get this far, I think what we might do is just go out to the training area and um, do some stalls and stuff. And um, and then come back and land at Port Perry, I mean at, uh, at Parafield. Yeah, I think that might be a better option because it's, um, otherwise it's going to be, well, over an hour to do the video. And... Get away. Now, let's make it a turn. 303, 333, three, three, sorry, 330. Three, three, Keep it coordinated. Because, um, you've got two control spaces here. You've got, um, Adelaide control space, uh, back that way. And then, up this corridor here, uh, you've got Edinburgh Air Force military airspace, which is restricted. So you've got to stay in between these. What's 
you cross this bit of water, we'll climb up to 5,000 feet. And really nice. Wow, it's really, really nice. Wow. I love it already. What a plane. Now, now you might be wondering, what's this? This is the digital VOR. Now we're tuned into 116.4, which is the uh, Adelaide VOR, Alpha Delta. And so what you're seeing here is it's telling us we're on the um, the 174 radial from uh, Alpha Delta. So it's giving us the the ident code for that. Um, uh, for that VOR to whichever station is tuned in you don't doesn't matter what this is set to if you've got the station tuned in then it will give you the radial and the ident code it will just cycle through the letters and um, the autopilot is actually surprisingly easy to operate um, at least in a basic level so we've got the master switch on the only thing you have to remember with the autopilot is so that's in test mode at the moment and all the lights clear is uh, the flight simulator key for setting out for altitude hold won't hold the altitude you've actually got to press oops just a second let's get rid of that get rid of that get that on uh, you've actually got to press the um, altitude holds button on the yoke which is right there so we're gonna hold heading which is 330 so we're gonna press it once once and twice and now we've got heading hold now we can climb it out Power up, climb it out to 5,000. Now you'll see sometimes with the autopilot, uh, from what the manual says, that these lights will flash and you'll get an audible beep beep sound, and that's telling you that you have to adjust the, you have to manually adjust the trim for the airplane until it stops beeping. And it's probably a little bit more involved in that. And um, I'm not sure yet. Um, as I said, I haven't experimented with it. This is um, my first time, so but that's what the manual was saying. So currently we've got heading selected, so we're on heading back at the moment. And climbing out at 500 feet, right? See? However, I do like the A2A, uh, the um, the Bendix King on the 172. It's um, a little bit more complicated to use, but it's um, once you get the hang of it, it's um, quite intuitive. I'd imagine that there's there's a reason why uh, A2A included this. Um, my guess, because Scott has one of these planes, or A2A has one of these planes. My guess it's Scott's plane. Um, and my guess is that one of these is either in Scott's plane or he would like to have one in his plane. So, <laughs> so I guess is that's why we've got it. Well, I'm happy with that. New things are always great. New stuff to learn. So look how much nose down trim we needed after takeoff. It's a lot of nose down trim. Um, I was in nose down trim pretty much the entire uh, climb out, just trying to get the nose to um, settle down. This is 
lovely. Spent many an hour out here. This is the training area for Parafield Airport. This is lower light. Climb right up a bit. So, from what I've seen so far, using the uh, the altitude hold, it looks like you're going to have to level the plane out yourself first, and then um, um, and then hit the altitude hold. I'm guessing that's the way that works, but we'll find that out. as we go back okay here we come Still on mixture rich because we're below 5,000. Let's do some stalls. Okay. Let's kill the autopilot. And first up, we'll do a power off stall. What's our power setting at the moment? 1st Mash, mash, mash. 
Come on, break. Break, come on. Whoops, gotta use some rudder to pick it up. Whoops. <laughs> Woo. Let's level it out a bit and let's see if she'll spin. any elevator this time. Let's get Over she goes. Woohoo! <laughs> I, I had to actually push it into the spin. She really didn't want to go into the spin. So we'll do it again. We'll actually try to see if it can actually go into the spin on its own. The ailerons are still effective, even into that. Full power on. You watch, you watch the rudders. I'll try not to use any rudders. Still stalled. Nope, she's going to a spin. Nope, she got it out of it. It's a lot faster if I actually use the rudder. We'll do it again, but this time we'll use rudder. With the nose a bit, let's go. So we pick it up with the rudder. There we go. Wow. That's really cool. It's an extremely stable airplane. It's um, really reluctant to um, to just go into a fully developed stall. Um, with the 152, um, she has a real tendency to drop a wing. And uh, in the real plane, it's tended to drop the right wing nearly all the time on a, on a f full power on stall. And nearly every time it would drop the right wing in the plane that I flew. Uh, well, a few flew of them. Flew a few of them. <laughs> I'm really liking this. Let's try some steep turns. Let's try a limit turn. Pull back. Let's get some. Wow, look at that. Hardly any rudder. Try to get that descent rate stabilised. Just keep rolling it over, trying to see where it's going to step there, but just about right there. Now let's see what happens if, let's see if um, stall speed increase with bank angle is simulated. So let's pull the power back and slow it down. Take it down to 80 knots and then we'll try some really steep turns and see if she'll stall. Because um, the 172 would stall at around a 60 degree bank. She would stall at about uh, 85 to 90 knots, somewhere around there. So let's try that. It's 45. Gonna try to hold the nose up, hold them. Stop from descending. Whoa, look at that. There's, there's the light on. Look at that. Wow. That was right on the edge of stalling there, so it is simulated. Let's do it again. Oops. Get the rudder in. See, bang, right. Look at that. That's 60 degrees of bank, and it's just flashing the stall warning light. So that's simulated. That's really good. I wonder if she'll loop. Oh, 
Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> She's not rated for inverted flight. Ooh, that was right on the edge of um, V and E. Okay, so I remember on the promo video for this, um, Scott was talking about the roll rate. So let's check out the roll rate. I need to bring the speed back a bit because we're pushing the maneuvering speed. Positive rate of G climb, roll. Mm. Yep. It's actually quite nice. It's about full power, and we we'll just do a just a normal roll. Go inverted. Engine dies because of fuel starvation. It comes back up again. Look at that air start. Wow. Let's head back to the airport. Try this altitude hold. Let's get it trimmed for level. This is a really nice plane. I think if you're a fan of um, FSX planes, particularly A2A planes, I think you would be remiss not to add this to your hangar. VOR and HD is localizer. I don't know why they call it that. Sorry, yeah, low and high, which is basically track. So this is roll. It's set, if, if you've got the yellow light there, then it's set to roll. Um, so you use this to roll it left or roll it right. And set it to, to HD, press it again, you can set it to, to heading. So you can use the heading bug. Uh, here and set it to, um, to low, and you can uh, just fly a VOR. 
or a localizer. Now these switches, this is a nav 1, nav 2, and to and from the reciprocal. So that's 2, because we're going to it. So it's really simple to use that. And we actually want this to go a little bit this way. Let's go back to heading. So yeah, the autopilot's actually really simple to use. It's just um, turn on the autopilot master switch. Um, and um, cycle through the button to what you want. And then make sure you get the plane all trimmed out yourself and it's all set up for level flight. Then press altitude hold and it's quite happy. Um, don't do what you do in the Caronados where you're just coming up to an altitude and just press altitude hold and expect it to be able to um, um, level it out for you. Uh, it won't do that. Really nice. Really beautifully done. Let's fail something. What can we fail? What can we fail? Fail the autopilot. All right, it's fail of Still warning. Engine gauges. Oil temp. So that's that's failed the oil temp. Let's test it. Turn it back on again. Here we go. Hehe, <laughs> about that. Beacon, landing light, lights, this has got to be fuel pump, yeah. Um, nav lights, um, <laughs> nav lights, uh, flight simulator pilots love to have the nav lights on the daytime. Real pilots only use nav lights at night, so don't turn the nav lights on. <laughs> I find it really funny that, um, it's like my mate of mine, he's, he just, if there's a button to push, he would just push it, he just loves, I don't know what it is about him, but he just loves pushing buttons. So I bought him a present one day, I bought him the, um, uh, the shuttle, uh, the space shuttle simulator, and it was riddled with switches. He was in seventh heaven. <laughs> hey Mark. <laughs> Some people just like that nav light on, even though it's daytime. Yeah, it's only used at night time. Lovely plane. Just... Wow. They must have tested the bejesus out of this, because... Uh, when they released the 172, um... Oh, it has so many flaws in it, or problems with it, and, um, but not this, this is absolutely nailed. I was coming out here once, um, in the 152, and I was at 5,000 feet, I climbed up through here, going outbound, going the other way, and I was at 5,000 feet, and, um, just over here there's Edinburgh Air Force Base, I can't really see it at the moment. It's just out here somewhere, I can't remember where. And it's really easy to see from uh, in real life. And um, uh, an F-111 took off and uh, made a right turn at the end of the runway, it turned off going south, take took off going south, made a right turn at the end of the runway and climbed out. Uh, we've got a rule here um, at the policeman I was flying. Uh, that separation had to be main, maintained between aircraft a thousand feet vertically and 600 feet horizontally 
and he he just came right inside my airspace and within about 300 feet of me and I had to file an incident report because he was at the same altitude and he just just climbed up and woof, up to 5,000 feet in just that distance it was amazing spectacular to watch and as soon as I saw him across my altitude I had to climb because I was all I was thinking about was the uh, the jet wash from it and because I really didn't want to run into that in a little 152 that was wicked but I still had to find the final incident report on him for violating my airspace which he really should not have done he should have been nowhere near that altitude because that was the training area so he should have been nowhere near it oh but geez it was specky <laughs> it's really nice when you pass an F-111 in the sky <laughs> um, so I think we might do a left turn here Lulu, there's Edinburgh there yep that's where he took off from right through there That's an Orion base, um, anti-submarine warfare, that base. Okay, let's make a left turn. There will be power field. I'm not going to bother with ATC. Not this flight. This is just a fun flight. Okay, let's kill that. And start bringing the power back. And descending. We need to get down to a thousand feet. that fast. Just trim back and get it slowed down. Yeah, it takes quite a lot of trim. And you can see I'm just piling trim on. See how she lands. Okay, just coming up on a thousand feet. Runway. 
bunch of flap. Keep trimming back. Second notch of flap. And I'm going to be about 700 feet when we turn final. Last notch of flap. 85 knots, that's lovely. Just trying to get it to pitch up on its own without back pressure. Okay, that's got it. I think. Yeah, a little bit high. Still trimming. <laughs> Still trimming. <laughs> really does not like to, um, just keeps wanting to drop the nose. So let's just turn it on to final. About 700 feet. There's Main North Road down there. Oops, I'm going to get on the other side. It's alright turning early, but you know, I'm going to turn late because then you're into the crossing runway. A bit high, but that's alright. Yep, 85 knots, that'll do. bit of a stickler for trim. I like to get my trim set really nicely. It makes everything so much easier. It lined up in that center line. There you go, and the runway starts to flatten out. Right about now. We flare and we just hold it level. She really wants to float. Floaty, floaty, floaty. Still floating. Still floating. And on the main wheels. Brakes. Flaps up. Full back elevator to put the weight on the main wheels. There we go. And let's take this taxi away. Wow, that's actually uh, really challenging to actually, well not challenging, it's just you know, a little bit floaty on landing. You've really got to get that landing speed right or she's going to, um, that was a bit fast I thought, because um, we should have been down to about 60 uh, by the time we were over the fence. And uh, but we were still doing 85 knots over the fence. But I was still still having trouble trimming it. So But hey, first time in a new plane, yeah, so first first landing is always a little bit tricky. You should have seen some of my first landings in a one five two. Ooh wee. I bounced so high you could see over the hangars. <laughs> That's real life. <laughs> I remember uh, on that, that occasion, um, ATC called me up and said, Mike Juliet Foxtrot, okay Mike Juliet Foxtrot, could you see on the, could you see the sea over on that bounce? <laughs> and I go, Roger. <laughs> oh, that cracked me up. <laughs> Mm. 
really nice to taxi. Really is. It's predictable. Doesn't seem to have any momentum. Um, like the 172, if you give it a little bit too much rudder, even though if you've taken the rudder pressure off, it still wants to, still seems to want to turn. Whereas this doesn't like that, isn't like that at all. It's just when the rudders are neutral, and she straightens out. A bit of break. Um, I've heard people say about this that the brakes are a bit weak. I I don't think so. Uh, I think the brakes are quite realistic. Um, airplane brakes are um, they're not like car brakes, and they're certainly not, not like Carinado brakes. Um, they seem to be brakes on steroids compared to a real plane. Come on, a little bit more. Get that nose wheel on that T-bar. A little bit over, I think. There we go. Wow! Wow, what a plane. It's gonna shut down. I forgot to put the fuel, fuel pump on. I forgot to turn the landing light on. I forgot to put the beacon on. Got the strobe light there. <laughs> ah. Get rid of that. Master off. Fuel selector off. Oops. There we go. Wow, what a plane. Pfft, wow. I am impressed. I it's not very often that planes um um FSX planes impress me. But wow, this one does. Just gorgeous. Just gorgeous. And that's without any mods too. Except for the wheel pants. But I haven't put gap seals or root wing wing root um, seals or um, anything like that on there. But I will. And um, as I said, this was a, a brand spanking new plane. But the way I like to fly A2A planes, um, particularly with the GA ones, is... Um, I'll select one that's used and nicely used. <laughs> uh, my Cessna has got something like 4,300 hours on it, and I really like it. <laughs> wow, well, 10 out of 10, that's, that's a masterpiece. That is just absolutely amazing. They just nailed this. So if you're a fan of A2A or FSX planes, this is a must-have, absolutely must-have. There you go. I hope you enjoyed that. This is Neon saying bye. There will be more videos soon. Bye-bye.